All right, so today we're going to talk about other literary devices. Everything we've talked about so far can also be considered a literary device. Um, our sound devices, um, figurative language, all of that can, can be considered a literary device because they are techniques authors use in literature. But we're just going to learn a few more today. So the first one is theme. Theme is extremely important and you will use this for the rest of your time in high school. So let's take a look at what theme is. A theme is the central message or insight into life revealed through a literary work. Um, so what that's really saying is it's a major idea that's trying to be conveyed through whatever piece of literature you're reading. It can be stated directly or it can be implied. When you look at characters in a play or a novel or short story or anything you're reading um, and think about how they act, it can suggest a certain thing about life, about people and um, possibly something about the nature of love, how we love one another, or how people can change, or anything like that. Um, some themes, archetypal themes, are themes that are found across the world and across history um, over and over again. These again might be things like love, or that people who do right get rewarded, something like that. One theme that is kind of archetypal um, is often found in romantic comedies, like this is Love Actually. So in every romantic comedy you will ever see, one of the themes is that love can overcome all things. Usually there's some obstacle preventing people from getting together, but in the end of romantic comedy they always overcome it and get together in the end. So that's an example of one theme. So next is illusion. Make sure that you know the difference between illusion like this with an A and illusion with an I. Illusion with an I is like a magic trick. This illusion is something different. What this illusion is, is a reference to a well-known person, place, event, or work of art. So when you're reading a piece of literature, it's going to reference one of these things. Again, it's usually going to be well-known. And there are four different types we need to know. Classical allusions are when um, they reference, the author references Greek or Roman mythology. So that might be Zeus or Hermes or something like that. Literary allusions are going to be references to literature. Oftentimes this is Shakespeare because tons of people reference Shakespeare, but it can be any other work of literature. Historical allusions reference people or events of history. Um, it could also be artwork in history you know, battles, famous people in history, that could be historical allusions. Biblical allusions reference the Bible. So we're actually going to take a look at a few literary allusions in this video clip. So you can see that those were all references to either Shakespeare, Stephen King, 
um, literary allusions, making reference to authors or their stories. And so that's an example of that. We'll see tons of allusions throughout everything we read to make sure you know what it is, but also be able to distinguish the different kinds. So moving on to a pun. Puns are plays on words. They're jokes involving words with two or more different meanings or two words that sound alike that have different meanings. Here's an example. These are terrible puns. So you see the word terrible here means you can literally rip them off, tear them off right here. But it sounds like terrible, like um, awful, not very good puns. So this is a pun in itself because it's playing with the word terrible and the two different um, two different words that are spelled differently but they sound the same. So you will find puns all throughout Shakespeare and we've looked at an example in the Shakespeare video but that's basically what a, ter uh, what a pun is, is a play on words, either the same word with two different meanings or two different words that sound similar. Finally, or no, I'm sorry, this is not finally, but next is irony. Irony can be kind of difficult to explain. So, irony is a literary technique that portrays differences between appearance and reality or expectation and result. Um, and it's knowing the different types of irony is going to help you distinguish what is irony and what is not. So first is verbal irony. The thing you need to remember about verbal irony is that it's going to be intentional. It's when words are used to express the opposite of what is meant. Basically, this is sarcasm. So when a character in whatever we're reading says something, but they mean something the opposite of it, that is verbal irony. Just because it involves words does not make it verbal irony. It has to be where the character or whoever is speaking is saying the opposite or an exaggerated version of what they mean. Dramatic irony is different. Dramatic irony can only take place when the audience, whether it's an, an audience watching a play or the reader reading a novel, the audience knows something that the character doesn't. Um, so there's a contradiction between what the character thinks about something or thinks is going to happen and what the audience knows is true. And we'll see some examples of that. And then situational irony is the most common. Situational irony is when an event occurs that contradicts the expectations of anybody, the characters, the reader, or the audience. So let me show you a couple of examples. So this first one, um, we have a billboard that says childhood, childhood obesity, don't take it lightly. Then right underneath it you have a McDonald's sign. Now, at first thought, you might think it's verbal irony because it is using words, but really this is situational irony. Both of these billboards are sincere. They are saying what they mean. It's the situation of them being placed right next to each other that is ironic. Also, just to reference the last one we did, don't take it lightly is a pun. So you're not supposed to take obesity lightly, as in you're not supposed to just throw it off, you need to think about it seriously, but also, of course, light is kind of the opposite of obese, so it's a play on words there. Here's one, number one teacher, so this student did mean that their teacher was number one, but they misspelled teacher, so obviously they weren't that great of a teacher. Um, that is an example, again, of situational irony. Even though it's using words, it's situational irony because it is the situation of the words on the apple that is ironic. The speaker or the writer of the words was not intentionally being ironic. Our next one and our final one is paradox. A paradox is a statement that seems contradictory but may actually express a deeper truth. Uh, one of the best examples of this is from One Direction, floating out here in, in space there. So here's some lyrics from a song by One Direction. If only you saw what I can see, you'll understand why I want you so desperately. Right now I'm looking at you and I can't believe you don't know, you don't know you're beautiful. That's what makes you beautiful. So these last two lines are what we're focusing on. You don't know you're beautiful, that's what makes you beautiful. So 
the idea here, there is a truth here. It expresses a deeper truth that this girl, whoever they're talking about, is beautiful because she is not aware of it. She doesn't kind of flaunt her beauty. That's what they're trying to say. But really, the idea that she doesn't know you're beautiful, or you don't know you're beautiful, that's what makes you beautiful, then him telling her her beautiful would make her not beautiful. That would be a paradox because he's trying to express to her that she's beautiful and then she she won't be. So this statement is really contradictory. Um, and also being beautiful doesn't really have to do with not whether you know it or not. So we have a paradoxical statement there, but it is used to express a deeper truth. So just saying two things that contradict aren't necessarily a paradox. It has to also have a deeper meaning to it that is somehow true. So remember these terms and we will look at more examples of them tomorrow in class.